Welcome to ITK Bar Camp and our training sessions on C++ programming. Today we are going to continue our introduction to macros and in this session we are going to use macros as a way of accelerating code by using a macro as a replacement for a function. Uh, the essential technique is called inlining. Let's start by opening our example. And we add the uh, usual headers. So the first header will have the functions for managing streams, and the second one will have the functions that we use to convert arguments from the common line, so strings, into uh, integers and uh, numeric parameters. We add the body of our typical function with the parameters. array of strings and the number of arguments. Okay, and um, as we have done in previous sessions, we want always to check for the number of arguments to be correct. So uh, here we are going to expect one command line argument. That means that the array will have to have two values. One is the name of the executable and the second one is the actual first command line argument passed to the program. If we don't get them, then we are going to indicate that something is missing. And then we are going to quit. And we quit with a non-zero non value. So uh, the color program or the calling scripts will be able to um, recognize that the program failed in during execution. Okay, so let's um, assume that we are going to receive an, a number, so an uh, in integer, so the input number will be uh, taken from the second element in the array, remember that the array starts with uh, zero, and we are going to convert that number to an integer, so we do a conversion from uh, alphanumeric to integer by calling the atoy function in order to get an integer. Actually, let me replace here. In this case, we really want a float number because we are going to verify um, whether this number is divisible by 3, for example. So we are going to use the a to f uh, alphanumeric to float function for the conversion. And uh, what we want to have is something that will verify that divisibility. So we are going to write a function that verify if this import number is divisible by 3, and if it is, then we're going to print a message that describes that. And you can imagine that we could add the alternative. message with the negation. Alright, so so far we have all the infrastructure for all the, the armature for the code and now we need to write that function. So traditionally you could have um, written that function this way. And we want to return is an expression similar to the following. We take uh, the number, we divide it by 3, and if that expression is equal to, uh, you know, if after dividing by 3, the integer conversion of that expression is equal to what we get when we just divide it by 3, then we claim that it is divisible. And there are probably smarter ways of doing this, but uh, as an illustration purpose, we'll go with this one right now. So if these two expressions are equal, then we, we claim that the number was divisible, was in this divisible by zero. Sorry, by uh, three. We don't want numbers divisible by zero. Okay, so let's try compiling this. 
Notice that so far we have not used the macro yet. Uh, I'm illustrating so far how this could be um, written using functions. Okay, and we run it. Without any argument, we get the message instead of a segmentation fault because we are actually uh, checking for that value of argc. And if we pass a value, let's try 35. 35 is not divisible by 3. 33 is divisible by 3. Uh, we are missing a, a space in that message that's easy to fix. Okay, this is just decoration. Now, instead of having this function, so what is the issue with this function? When we are using this function here, um, at the moment of arriving to this uh, line ni uh, 19, to, for execution, what the computer is going to do is to take the input number, insert it, push it into the stack, then make a jump to another section of code where the actual um, execu executable code of this function is located in memory. It's going to run that function, uh, capture the return value, put it in the stack, then the control is going to be returned to this section of the code, and the answer is going to be pulled from a stack, from the stack. So you can imagine that this is a um, it's not a negligible number of operations, and if the computation that you're performing inside of the function is very small, then you may be uh, trapped in the situation where the, the overhead of introducing values into the stack, jumping to another section of the code, and uh, recovering the value from the stack may be considerable, uh, may be large, compared to the actual computation that is executed in the function. So if that's the case, if you're in that situation, then the alternative that is interesting to use is that instead of defining this as a function, we um, define it as a macro. And macros will not be aware of types, so they will have only this type of um, appearance. Remember that um, macros have to define a single line, so if we want to use multiple lines, we need to escape the end of line for each one of them. So we have converted that function into a macro, and um, the execution of inside of the code, it looks pretty much the same. The rest of the code is still calling something that looks like a function, but this time it's not really a function. Uh, what the preprocessor is going to do is to take this expression, uh, and I have to remove some of these pieces here because this will no longer have this appearance. It actually will be just something like that, and probably a couple of parentheses around would be healthy. Uh, we want to convert this into a, a string that we can essentially copy-paste. That's exactly what the preprocessor pre is going to do. It's going to copy-paste this line and insert it here. And in the process, it's going to substitute this x value with the input number. So it's really a, a search and replace kind of operation. Um, we don't need the, end, the escape at the end of line. We need it here in order to show that this is a single line of code. Or we could have put everything into a single line, but this is just in the limit where it's more convenient to read it if you wrap the line. Okay, so we have our macro that is now, um, it takes arguments, so it looks like a function. And we are going to compile it. Let's see what the compiler thinks of this. Uh, it is unhappy with 929. Uh, let's see what I did in 929. Oh, I maybe this here. Let's try again. Okay. Yeah, so um, my mistake here is that I was introducing parentheses around um, X. Um, that's not necessary there. Uh, the place where we do want to introduce parentheses is when we use x in the macro. And we'll illustrate that in a minute, but let's, let's first run it. Okay, so we get the normal message, and now we put uh, 33 is divisible by 3, and 34 is not. Okay, so the execution of the code is just the same as when we're using a function. The advantage now is that this code should uh, go a lot faster when it comes to running this function. So you can appreciate that uh, this is probably only worth if this is the kind of function that you're going to call thousands or maybe millions of times, and therefore that difference of um, uh, computation time really matters. 
Uh, otherwise, it's really not worth the trouble of creating a macro as a function. Um, you have the maintenance overhead, you have the difficulty of debugging and this kind of expressions because when something goes wrong, the errors that you're going to get from the compiler are the result of looking at the code as if you actually expand this expression here. So uh, what the compiler really sees is this. with the replacement of um, x as input number. This is really what the compiler is going to see. Now, if you make a mistake in one of these expressions, the, the mistake will appear in the line here. That's how the compiler is going to see it, but it's not how you are going to see it when you open the file. So the messages that the compiler is going to report when mistakes are introduced in the text of macro um, may look a bit arcane because they are referring to something that you're not seeing in the file. You still you, you still see this type of expression. And uh, if there is a semicolon or, or any other symbol that shouldn't have been inside of this code, the error, uh, the corresponding error will be displayed by the compiler. So that's, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to use this type of expressions um, if you're not really needing to increase the performance for a function that you're calling many, many times during the execution of the code. And uh, finally, uh, the, the, let's explain why we want to have these parentheses around the use of the argument. The reason is that the, the function could have been called this way. We, I could have called this with the expression 3 plus 1. Uh, when we are thinking that this function, or that this expression is actually a function, this would be valid because um, the compiler will first evaluate this expression, it will obtain the, the value 4, and then it's going to pass it here if that was a function. Uh, however, when we are working with a macro, what really happens is a test text replacement. So um, the way the compiler is going to really see this code by the time it, it receives it after the preprocessor has made expansions of the macros is that in that line uh, where the x is, we're going to see a 3 plus 1, or the compiler is going to see a 3 plus 1. If we have not put this parenthesis, then the expression becomes this that you can rapidly uh, recognize that not what we intended to write here. Um, we'll be adding, you know, 3 plus 1 third and, you know, same on the other side. So the parenthesis um, around the arguments of the macro is a, is a good protective practice that ensures that the way the um, compiler is going to see, look at the code, is very similar to you, what you are anticipating. It's very similar to the behavior that you will obtain if you were actually uh, using a function in this case. Okay, let's see if I didn't destroy any of this. All right, and our code is still working. And that concludes our session. Thank you for listening.